In this video, I want to show you how you can use MDX to create awesome documentation or even blog posts or anything you want. This that you can see on the screen has been created with MDX. So we have got an embedded YouTube video, we've got an alert box, we've got a list, a title, images, and we even have code blocks with a copy button. And that has all been done with a bit, just a little bit of code. And most of it is markdown that you can see here. You can see we have got a list, we have got the titles, but we do also have some imports. Imports, for example, for the alert. Import for the copy around the code blocks. So we're gonna show you how to do that in this video. So if that sounds exciting to you, don't go away, stay tuned, and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get started by creating a Next.js app and then we will add MDX to that project. So I'm gonna search through my history and I'm gonna create the latest Next.js app and we are gonna use the app router, which I know you're gonna be super excited about. So here we go, so the name of the project, we will call it MDX Video. Uh, we won't use TypeScript, although I do love TypeScript. We will use ESLint. We will use Tailwind because I want to put an alert in there that I'm quite excited to show you. Yeah, we can use the source directory. And yes, let's use the app router. And no, we won't customize any imports. Let that run and do its magic. Next.js, when creating an app, will do a commit for you. And for me, because I'm using GPG keys, I'm signing my commit. It's going to ask me for my password. For you, it probably won't do that. Okay, so now we've got that. Let's go into that project. We called it MDX Video. Let's go in and we can open our favorite editor, VS Code. Let's get the project up and running and make sure it does work. So we'll do npm run dev. And therefore, we can see it. Uh, improve and change over time. Therefore, if we break anything, we know exactly what we've changed at that time. So let me bring up Chrome, go to localhost 3000, and you can straight away see the default Next.js homepage. So that, that's working, that's looking good. And usually I would delete the contents of this page, but we're actually gonna add a new page, which is gonna have the uh, MDX extension rather than the JavaScript extension. So let's stop that running for a moment. The next thing we want to do is we want to install those dependencies that I spoke about. So we will want next MDX and we will also want MDX JS loader. We will want MDX JS react. Oh, can't spell react. And let's get some types in there as well. There's no point running the project just yet because nothing would have changed. So the next thing we want to do is we need to create an MDX component file um, in the root of the project. So it's going to be right in the root of the project. We'll create a new file and we'll say MDX component JS. Or you can use TSX if that's you know what you prefer. What this file will contain is any customization of the Markdown converting to a HTML. For example, if we want to override um, how a H1 is created or a list or anything like that, this is where we would put it. So for now, we just need kind of like uh, almost returning the default component. So we'll export uh, the function and we need to call it uh, MDX. Components and we see Copilot has already kind of auto completing it. Let's have a look. We're returning H1. No, we don't want it at the moment. What we do want to do is return all the components and then we can customize later on. So that's just an example. I'm going to comment that out, but we are going to return the components that we get into this component, if that makes sense. So we're just not doing anything fancy, we're just returning it straight away. But later on, you can override the H1 or the lists and things like that, which is pretty, pretty awesome. And next thing we do is update the Next.js config. So let's open that and let's have a look. And this isn't really doing anything because this object is completely empty. So we could just kind of delete that and, and start again, which is what I recommend. So let's say we'll create a constant and we'll say with MDX and we'll um, include MDX as well. No customization just yet. And we will also say next.js config. Let's see if Copilot's gonna complete it for us. Just the bracket didn't complete as much as I wanted. Page extensions, that looks good. I usually just use the, the MDX extension. I don't want it to do all the others, but you know, for this example, we can leave them all in and then we can add other configuration that we need as well. But for now, we'll keep it empty and then we'll do um, a module export with MDX, Next.js config. Thank you very much, Copilot. 
Awesome. So now let's create a markdown file and see how it looks. So we'll open the source directory and we can create a new folder in app. We'll just call it MDX or documentation or blogs, whatever you prefer, create MDX. And then here we'll just go page.mdx because we know JS works. And let's include something, let's have a look. We'll say this text is bold and this is italic. Here we go. Okay, hit save. And now we should restart the app. We'll start the app again and uh, let's see what happens to this page. And don't forget, you can use all the cool stuff that you get with Next.js and like layout. So the MDX files could have a different layout if you wanted and all the rest. But we'll keep it simple for today. So let's go back to here. Let's do npm run dev. Hopefully we don't get any errors. Looking good so far. And let's bring this, refresh this. It should be exactly the same. This shouldn't change. And if we visit forward slash MDX, there you go. You can see this text is bold and this is italic. So it works. We have Markdown coming through um, our Next.js and it just works perfectly. But it's not that exciting yet. So let's add some more excitement to this. So how can we make it more exciting? Well, we could add a component. So let's see. Let's create a component folder. And we will just say components. And in here we could call it an alert, for example. And in here we can just kind of take something from Tailwind. So here's a Tailwind alert that I quite like and we can use. So I'm just going to grab the code and copy it. And I want to paste it in here. And we're going to make a few changes. We're going to call this alert. We also don't have this um, installed. So we will need to install that as a dependency. And I'm also going to say we can pass in the children to this component and we will put it in here. And they probably don't want the, all the children kind of in a, in a P tag, but for this example, I think it will work fine. And then let's go to here and stop that for a second and do npm install um, Heracons React. I think that's correct with the forward slash. We'll find out in a moment. That's taking too long. And I've just Googled it and it's gone at in front. So that probably didn't help. So I had that cache. So that came down a lot, a lot quicker. Right. Let's do npm run dev. And we're not using that component yet. So let's import the alert component. And we can say import alert from components, not autocomplete from copilot.view. No, that's it, .js. And you do need the extension when using imports in an MDX file that has caught me out before. And then we're going to use the alert component. And this is what we're going to kind of pass in as the, the children. Let's have a look. We can see the alert below. This is an alert message. So let's just put 111. And then we'll put 222 and I'll hit save and you'll see there are now two. And you can then customize the alert more. So for example, if you wanted to put a margin of four around the alert, you can see now there's a margin around them. And we can even customize further and put the one above that text. And you can see that's how it will look. So you can really customize your markdown because markdown's amazing. It's great. I absolutely love it. But sometimes it does have some limitations. And sometimes you don't always want to code stuff, but sometimes you do. And this gives you the flexibility of both, but also the consistency of using components. So I think it's great. It's a great way to host and create your blog because the next year you can do um, server-side rendering. You can do it how you want. It's just so customizable and flexible. So let me know in the comments below how you would use it and what you would create with it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. And I look forward to geeking out with you every day in the Eddie Hub community, where we talk about open source and accelerating your career. Link in the description below. I'll see you there.